Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden with The Geek Group. Today's episode is brought to you courtesy of Bruce Barone, who is kind enough to donate this camera to Moose. Uh, Moose's camera died because we do a lot of things that tend to kill things like cameras. And <laughs> Bruce was kind enough to send her this so that she could still do her job around here at the lab. And Moose got a shiny new camera. This one died in a flood shortly thereafter. So we're going to autopsy it because cameras are full of all kinds of nifty pieces. So. Let's dig into it. Um, I'm going to start by getting the strap off because it really serves no purpose for us at this point and it's just in my way. There, we don't need that. Now, basic things that come off right away are things like the lens. So you just push right here, there's a button, and turn this, and the lens pops off. So all the photographers watching this, I know. Leave me alone. We're taking it apart. It's never going to work again. Accept that now, and we'll move on. If you need a moment of, of peace, a little bit of zen, because I'm about to completely hose this camera, just I suggest you take that now. Okay. Now let's see what we can dig into. We'll start with the lens, because there's some really nifty bits in there. And the lens on this has electrical fittings. You can see the little electrical bits right there. And that tells me that there's stuff in here. Given the number of electrical connections, I'm guessing we'll probably find a rotary encoder, probably a little motor of some kind. But these things are expensive, and people never get to take them apart. So it's one of the fun things of my job. And that's the whole idea. That's why we do these equipment autopsies, because there's a whole world of people out there that like taking things apart just to see how they work. And people don't get to take apart things like, you know, camera lenses because they're expensive or giant industrial robots because, you know, they weigh several tons and it's not the kind of thing that your average 12 year old's going to drag home. So I'm here to take things apart with you so that we can see how they work and see what they do and learn about the expensive and delicate things inside so that you don't have to take your dad's camera apart. So if you want to, it's a great way to get it beaten. All right, we've got the four back screws off, and this pops right out, or it wants to. There's some kind of connection. There's a little short cable. All right, do we have any hidden screws? I don't see any. Hey, it's never going to work again anyway. There. <laughs> All right, we've got a ring. We've got the back cover. Yeah, those were soldered right under. Now we're into the next layer of screws. Canon made this lens, and they're very proud of that fact because Canon is written in about 10,000 different places in here. That's what we've got. We've got a circuit board here with some little cables. Now these, take a look here. This is a, uh, where am I? This is a ribbon connector, and you'll see one here, and here, and here. The way to disconnect these is you, there will be a little black plastic bit here. The plastic's in different colors, but on the, the ribbon cable side of the plug, there'll be a block, and if you grab the two edges of that block and pull it forward, that unlocks the cable, and then the cable will pop right out. So that's the secret to that. And that all pops out, and then we've got Two little wires, a red wire and a black wire, which usually indicate DC. Red is almost always positive, black is almost always negative. So we're going to cut those wires because I have a feeling those go to a little motor. And that might be fun to play with. And other things on here, there appears to be a plug of some sort. Well, it looks kind of like an LED, so I'm not, not really sure. And there's, this is kind of cool, on the back of the circuit card, there's a bunch of contact patches that things wipe on, and that's for things to move. You can see there's wipers here. There's a set of wipers. And those move back and forth like that, and they make contact on here. So that's it's for various settings. It's probably one of the things, that might be used as a position encoder to let it know where it's at. So we've got, Optics, I do not see any kind of iris 
which kind of bites because I was really hoping to show you guys an iris. Irises are one of the neatest bits of engineering there is. There, there is an aperture in here? Okay. I'm just taking out screws at this point. I see a position encoder. There's a little rotary encoder, and we'll talk about that once I get it out. Right now, I'm just digging into its creamy center. Lots of gears. Little tiny gears and screws. And I'm just doing this by taking out every screw I can see at each layer, and then we'll just see what falls out. Like here we've got a thing of wipers, and this is a, a little tiny thing of contacts, really tiny. And they're double fingered on the ends. Now this should pop out. Taking off the cover for all the gears. And there's a handful of cables holding it in there. Now we've got the gear drive. Okay, now look at this. Let's see what we got. We've got a bunch of gears, so we can pop those all out. And we've got a screw on the back that I'll take out. That's probably the motor mount. Lots of little electronic bits. There's, there's a lot more electronics in a lens than, than I'd really counted upon. Now, if you look here, see if I can get you a good close-up. Um, right there, that little wheel. Here, let's get the cable out of the way because we don't need that. Okay. There's a little wheel right here. And that wheel's got holes in a circle around the outer edge. And what that does is every time that this, the, the wheel with the holes is linked through gears to other stuff, and over here on the edge, it's really hard to see. It's tiny to see, and it's right in front of me. Um, right here, there's a little sensor here. And on one side will be a sensor, and on, on the back side will be a little light. And as the wheel turns, it chops that light beam. So it turns a little light on and off and on and off. And those are wired through the cables that you see there so that it knows there's somewhere there's a little computer chip or something here. You can see the counter here. There's a little computer chip or something that counts the number of pulses. And by counting the pulses, it knows how far it's gone. So that's how it knows where it's focused. And here's, here's your little encoder wheel. It's actually on a little pulley. There's a pulley on the back. And there's a belt. Here's the belt. And there's the pulley. And so there's, there's your wheel with the pulley and the belt. Here's the belt. And that's how it knows how far it goes. It's called a, a rotary encoder by counting the little pulses of light, which it turns into little pulses of electricity. So we got all that stuff. And we've got the motor here, which is about the size of a little pager motor. It's got a little pulley on it. So that's actually useful. We can use that again. It's probably a little 5-volt motor or something like that. And what's next? Now we dig way down in there, and there's another set of wipers. And I'm going to try and turn this. And when I turn it there, this screw hole lines up. It's starting to make bad noises now. It doesn't want to turn very well. OK, what else do we have? This is a really cheap plastic lens. Um, modern metal lenses are much better, like much higher quality as far as build construction. But this is obviously a, a very low-end cheap lens. It's a kit lens. OK, and this is the point when I know I'm doing something wrong.
take that out. I'm just taking off every little screw I can find. The problem is I'm running out of screws and I still got whole assemblies here that aren't coming apart. Now that's the thing that holds the autofocus and variable focus or autofocus and manual focus switch. That comes right out. It's getting gummed up pretty good now. Lots of extra pieces we don't need. Okay, there are no more screws that I can see. And I know there's more goodness inside. So now we apply some torque. Um, I'm going to try cutting this off, the, the rubber outer band, because a lot of times manufacturers will hide screws and assembly bits under stickers or under an outside rubber coating or something like that. So, to, ah, there we go. Look at that. See, we take off the rubber band and there's lots of screws. It's a good idea to look for that kind of stuff before you start forcing things, because you got to remember, it wasn't forced together, so you shouldn't have to force it to take it apart. This is not always the case, but unless you're working with like wheel bearings and stuff like that, as a rule, if you're forcing it, you're doing it wrong. And with this, because there's rotational assemblies, you'll, you'll see there's a hole here, and I couldn't figure out why. You turn it, bing, a screw shows up there. So it's like a puzzle. Rubik's lens. I have a feeling I'm going to take apart a bunch of screws and this is just going to pop right apart nice and easy. There. Oh yeah. That's way better. Okay. What am I missing? Got little plastic bits sticking here and there. We're catching on something back here. It's like there's a combination to put it together. There we go. I broke it. I can live with that. Ah, but we got down to the cool part on the inside. All right, we'll get to this in just a second because that's, that's going to be the coolest part. Um, this piece is lots of slidey bits of plastic. And there is the big lens on the outside. That's called the objective lens. And there's, see, when there's lenses inside, those are referred to as elements. So if you see something like an article or something that talks about like a, an 11 element lens or something like that. It means there's 11 pieces of glass from the front to the back. I cannot get that out of there. And I know I'm doing something wrong and there's some little Japanese guy somewhere yelling at me. And I can live with that. Okay, this, this needs, I need a precision lens tool. If I if I had, ah, I've got a precision lens tool. Here, this will work. Yeah, it came right out. See, it just needed proper application of science. Now, we get down to this inner piece, and you can see we've got the outer objective lens. Still works fine. That'll, that'll buff right out. Don't worry about that. And then we've got this piece inside, but if it was a good lens, if it was a metal lens, this would all be screwed together with really intricate internal and external threads. But this is a cheap plastic lens that probably came with the camera. And, and I can't get it apart because it's all, there, there's a lot of adhesives used here. So I can't really do anything with it. So that's screwed. But there's this piece, and this is neat. This is. And I don't know if there's a little motor. 
what? There's an electronic contacts in there. All right, this is an iris. Um, this is the aperture of the camera. And, it, and here, I'll let you get a really good look at that. It's, that's neat. Look in there. Isn't that neat? There's all these intricate little leaves that overlap. This is like the, the James Bond thing at the beginning of the James Bond movies. The iris comes down. So, yeah. Which is weird because what they're actually faking is uh, the rifling inside of a gun barrel in the James Bond movies. But they use an iris for that a lot. Now, just so you know, iris and aperture actually do mean two different things. A aperture is a hole, usually a small hole. An iris is a adjustable hole. So an iris and a camera can constrict down very tiny or open really big. Uh, the center of your eye, the, the black dot that gets bigger and smaller, that's your pupil. But the part around it with the color, that's your iris. And your iris actually expands or contracts. If it's... If you want to try this at home, go in the bathroom, look in the mirror, and get a flashlight and shine it at the mirror into your eye, like point it right at your eye in the mirror, and you'll see the iris, your iris will shrink because your eye's getting too much light. And that's pretty much what a camera does, too. I mean, remember, this is a, a mechanical eye. So when there's too much light, you bring the iris down. There's other stuff involved with depth of field and f stops and all that stuff, but we're not going to get into that because I don't understand it well enough. That, that's a moose thing. Ask her. So we've got a couple more pieces of glass here. We've got, uh, there's a little one in there, about a millimeter, or about a centimeter. And then there's a bigger one out here, about, uh, well, it's about two or three centimeters, so it's a pretty good sized lens there. So you just polish your optics right up there. Oh, yeah, that's totally cool. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, see, it buffs right out. It's great. It's beautiful. And we've got the iris here, which has no less than eight different wires going to it. And I don't know why. I think this might be electrically actuated which is really cool. Okay. Yeah, but I don't, I don't know how it moves, so I'm thinking it might be electrical. There might be a little motor in here or something. I've never gotten to take an iris apart before. So this is kind of cool. I'm trying to be gentle. This stuff's delicate. All right, I've got it out of its housing. Now this is probably the most expensive part of the lens because this is really intricate, really tiny. It's neat stuff. I see gears in there. I see some things that look like they might be magnets. I'm trying to get this apart without destroying it right away. All right, I'm going to very carefully pop these little things off. Nope, that goes the wrong way. OK, that'll, that, I don't want to take the leaves apart. Because I, I know as an iris it's going to be made of like half a dozen little leaves that once I open that assembly up, they're all just going to fall out. But there is a motor in here. It is electrical. And it's a voice coil kind of motor from the looks of it, like in a hard drive. Here, we're just going to rip the leads off because this is never going to get wired up to anything. And here's another one of those little counters I was telling you about. Take a look right there. and You can see it. There's uh, one of the little counters. See that? Two little slats. All right, now we're into this. Yep, there is a motor there. Look how tiny that is. I can get that in the light good enough. You can see there's two coils there and there. And then there's a little wheel right here, which is the armature of the motor. And I've never seen a motor quite like this. It's really, really something. So let's dig into it. Tiny little magnets and tiny little armatures. Yeah, there's the armature. And we've got two little coils. It's neat. There's a coil assembly. There's another coil assembly. Now we're down into just the armature. I'm going to grab a tiny little screwdriver. See if I can actuate this manually. There we go. OK, now watch. I got to find out where it is. OK. See how the hole gets bigger and smaller? There's actually six leaves in here. 
and I can open and close that hole. And there's six separate leaves, and they're overlapped. It, it works like this. There's, there's six leaves, and they sit like this, and this, and this, and that. So they're all overlapped, and they open up together by moving sideways, and they retract into the housing. So let's open this up, and I'll show you the leaves. Because to me, this is, this is the neatest part of the lens. I think irises are cool. They're wicked expensive. Because, I mean, they're hard to make. I mean, look at all the little tiny parts here. I'm a smart guy. I'd have a hard time making one of these. Okay. Here are the leaves. And see? They're all little hooks. And they overlap like that. And you can see them in there. So next time you're playing with a camera, look in the lens and you'll see the hooks. See, there's, there's all the little hooks. And you can see those if you look into a camera lens. You'll see the iris. It's the part that gets bigger and smaller. And you'll see the seams of the leaves. Um, don't do it to a camera that's plugged in or anything, but just take a camera and look inside, you know, get some light behind you. Do not shine sunlight directly into a camera lens. It'll mess it up. Huh? Yeah, sure, give me a camera if you got one laying around. Moose is going to grab us a camera. So now we can start digging into this. First thing I do, and you should always do this whenever you're taking something electronic apart, unplug it and take out the battery. Oh, hey, yeah, hand me that. This is a really cheap, crappy iris. This is more of an aperture than an iris, but this is one that, what is this out of, one of the studio lights or? So. Here's, here's an iris, and you can see this has three leaves. I'll put it down here. You can get a really good close-up on it. This one has three leaves, and by sliding this actuator here, I move them. And you may think there's only two at first, but if you look over here, there's a third leaf that comes out of the top here. So look. So this, you can make a camera with this if you were really bored. So show me yours, what do you got? Okay, now how do I move the iris? Oh, you can see it, yeah. You just uh, click here and it'll try to focus on something different. Okay, so yeah, you can see the iris just looking right down inside a lens thing. But you just look right in the end, you'll see the iris, it's in there. And I'm, this, by the way, is Moose's nice new camera which is the Sony Alpha that we did a review on a while back. All right, now let's dig into this. Because we've got lots of parts here. This will be neat. I'm just going to start, I'm going to start on the side. This is so cool. I've never gotten to take a digital camera apart before. I take a lot of things apart. Never got to do one of these. Gonna grab one of these. Okay, we don't need that. That doesn't get us anywhere interesting though. Okay, we'll try the other side. CF open. There is no memory card in the camera. If you're ever taking something apart and you have trouble finding, you know, it won't come apart, open up all the little hatches in that. There's often screws and stuff inside, and they'll get in your way. And there's, there's several screws in here, in fact, that we'll have to get to. I'm just going to take all the outer housing screws off real quick. There are a lot of them. You want to be careful whenever you're working on a camera that you know, you're not taking apart. As a rule, it's, it's a rather rare occurrence, unless you're a professional photographer with several lenses, that you actually have to take a lens off a camera. 
Um, but understand with the lens off, the delicate bits inside the camera are all exposed. They're very sensitive to any kind of dust or stuff that might come. Anything but light is bad, pretty much. Anything but light inside a camera is a bad thing. So you should try to minimize taking the lens off your camera. And when you do have to take it off, have the other lens go back on right away. So you, know, you pretty much only take it off if you're changing lenses. But it's off, and then you know, don't leave it sitting around like that. It'll die. Something will fall into it. It doesn't even have to be something big enough for you to see. Uh, a good reasoning behind this is, you ever been hanging out on a really sunny day, and you see a sunbeam come across your room, and you can just see the sunbeam, right? And there's, there's all that, if you look close, you'll see all this little tiny stuff floating in the air, all that dust and pollen and stuff. Yeah, that's always there. <laughs> the sunbeam doesn't make it. The sunbeam just makes it so you can see it. That stuff is always there. You're always breathing it. And it's harmless pretty much all the time. It's not harmless to a camera. There, there are certain things, especially nowadays, as, as technology has progressed, there are certain things that... Just opening them up will break them. Like uh, the hard drive in your computer. If you ever open up a computer hard drive, it's the kind of thing that you don't want to do at home. Um, you don't want to do unless you have a, a class 100 clean room in your home. Because just opening up a hard drive, one little tiny dust particle can destroy that whole thing. We'll do a whole thing on hard drives and why they have to be super clean and how heads fly and all that stuff. That, That'll be a cool video. I got all kinds of parts coming off now. We're getting into this. This is neat. There's some funny shapes involved here that hide interesting secrets deep inside. One of them is the prism. There will be a really cool prism right under here. You'll see this, this shape right here, that triangle. Here, I'll get you a close-up of that. See right here? We've got this pyramid shape. There's a prism under there, and it's really cool. Because the idea behind these cameras is it's an SLR. Now this is a DSLR, which means digital. Um, but SLR means single lens reflex. And that was a huge thing when they first, and it's still a huge thing, but it was, it was a big deal when they first came out because back in the day, Old cameras, like the Brownie and stuff like that, always had to have more than one lens. And this is true even today. Like if I grab my little handy camera, okay, this is just a, a cheap little camera. This is not a SLR. This actually has two sets of optics. It has the lens that takes the picture, and it has a little tiny lens up here, the viewfinder. So then you look through that, and you take your picture. But what you see through the viewfinder isn't the same as what you see through the lens because you're, you're looking through a totally different set of optics and it's shifted a little bit and it's all different. So when they came out with the ability to make a camera where you could look through the same lens that the film sees, oh, that's a big deal, that's, that's huge. But you have to be able to manipulate the light out of the way of the film and, and there's not a lot of room there, it's pretty thin. So you gotta be able to get the light in and up and back to your eye here because the film is down here, if, if there was film. In this, we have digital film. We've, we've got a CMOS device or a CCD or something like that. I think I'm out of screws. Um, so that was a big deal when they came out with the SLR concept. And that's why it's called a single lens reflex camera. It uses reflection and refraction to get it there. Oh, we've got, we've got big parts moving now. I still have screws falling out. Trying to be somewhat delicate. Ah, I got a couple screws in there. See, didn't we talk about that earlier? There's hidden screws under there that I need to deal with. There we go. Okay, I got all those out. These screws just hold the door on, but the door might have to come off to get something else off, so I'll just take those off to be safe. should free the door. 
There goes the door. Okay. Now I'm just going to grab a screwdriver and work this seam around and see what's holding it. It goes all the way around over there. Oh, there we go. Okay. Come on. Let's get this knob off. By now the housing should be coming apart, and it's not. Maybe there is something hidden under... Ah, I've got a little thing here. Got a little cover. There might be something under it. I had a little rubber plug here that may or may not hold something. But it would not surprise me at all if there was a screw under there. But it's not coming out, so we're going to try a different way in. There might be something under the Rebel sticker. That won't come off. Okay. See, this is hard to get into. I got everything moving, but I can't get pieces off. This camera does not want to give up so easily. But I have more time than it does. First rule of riding a horse. You have to be smarter than a horse. Ah, there we go. Ah, I feel better now. Okay, so we've got the outer cover, and this is just a circuit card and some buttons and nothing interesting. All right, now we've got the screen, which is a very nice little screen, and the backlight here. So that's the display screen, and then this is the backlight unit. We'll get that out of the way. Don't need that screwdriver, I need my other one. Okay. There's lots of shielding. It's the, the body of the camera is plastic. This, this isn't a metal body. So you can, you can bend it and break pieces off. Really good cameras have metal bodies, but this is not a really good camera. This is just a Rebel, which is decent for its price range. I mean, it's not an expensive camera either. Okay, we'll take that whole piece off. And there's a little plug here. So I can save that if I want it. And then here's another one of those things, the ribbon connectors. So you'll see there's a you push that down there. You push this down here. And that cable comes right out. Now I have that screen to go with its backlight. I'm just going to pop this off. Lots of little ribbon cables. If you can't get it with your fingernail, just put a little screwdriver in there and pop them. Or if you just don't care, just grab them and rip. Um, here's a little electronic thing you'll come across a lot. It looks like a little can with two wires coming out of it. This is something you'll see pretty commonly. I'll cut it out so you can get a good look at it. Take a look at that. It's got some blue goop on it that glued it in place. but. Uh, there. It's so tiny it'll stick to my fingers. But that little can with the two wires is a crystal. It's a timing crystal. If you take apart your quartz watch, it'll have one of those in there. It is why they call it a quartz watch. It's a little quartz crystal. And if you smack the crystal with an electrical charge, it'll vibrate. And it vibrates at a very repeatable frequency. It always vibrates at the same frequency. So they're used for timing a lot. Use them in radios too. I'm gonna do something bad if I keep forcing that. Okay, that's out. All right, we're gonna go in from the front a bit now. Now, when a DSL or DSLR camera is working, 
or any SLR camera, there's a mirror that has to jump out of the way to take the picture. Normally, the mirror is hanging down, and the light that comes in the front of the lens hits the mirror and bounces up into a prism that takes the light through the viewfinder. Because the viewfinder's up here, and under there, here, we'll get that right out of our way. Okay. Under here is a prism, and it goes into the viewfinder. So you've got light coming in down here, and you want light to come out up here. So there's a mirror. You can see it in there. I'll give you a good close-up. It's really hard to take pictures inside a camera. They're all black. But there's a mirror right here. You can see. And it flips out of the way. And when you take the picture, if you're ever looking through a camera, the moment you take the picture, it goes black. And the reason it goes black is this mirror right here flips up out of the way, and then the shutter is behind it. And the shutter is like an iris, but in this kind of camera, they're usually, instead of being round, they're flat. And it's a set of leaves, and they just blink open for just a second. And the, sh the shutter is behind there, and there's the shutter, and we'll, we'll get into that piece in a second. And then behind that is the image sensor, whatever type it may be. Don't need that. It is a real hot shoe. The top on um, part here, this, is called the shoe. If there's electrical connections on it, it's a hot shoe. If there aren't, then it's a cold shoe. Hot shoes are better. Cool. All right, we didn't need that. Aren't you glad? That was an important part. Anyway. We won't even talk about that. I don't like that part. It's just a switch. All right, now we're going to the side here. Still finding screws. Can you imagine the guys that have to build these? How boring a job that must be. Now, there's a dangerous part in here. This one will be safe because it hasn't been powered up in forever. But there is a dangerous part in here that I'm trying to get to. It's usually hidden over on this side. Um, it's really easy to spot once you're in far enough to see it. I wish there was an easy way to get this whole back piece out of the way. How many screws can you have on one circuit board? Get out of there. There we go. Come on. Okay, and that's just brains. I don't care about brains. This is getting, okay, now we're into the cool stuff. Yeah. I'm sure there's guys out there like, oh, you could talk about the image processor and all that. Nobody cares. <laughs> I want to talk about parts. Talk about things that work. Because, I mean, I, I could talk for half an hour about, you know, the crap on here and it's like okay there's USB and there's thing like that but back here there's well there's the digic chip and it's the Canon CK4 0384 chip and there's people I could talk about this for half an hour and it's boring who wants it? it's it's silicon it's little bits on a chip it's just an IC this there's there's stuff in here that actually does things that, where magic happens that's neat that's stuff that's cool that's stuff that's held in with a lot of little screws now we're going to get to the expensive part here in just a second after three more screws. Two more screws. This is the film of the camera. Now around here, even though we don't use film cameras, every camera that we use is digital, we refer to the memory card as the film. It's just a, a slang term around the lab here. We're like, oh, hey, you know, the camera's out of film. Okay. And we grab another memory card. But what really is the film in a digital camera is the image sensor. And this could be either, it, it's always one of two things. It's either a CCD or it's a CMOS. This one's a CMOS. Okay. And Oh, and there's a little thing off on the side. There's a ground. Okay. Now, this is the film in the camera. I'll put it here so you can get a really good shot of it. It's really pretty. It's iridescent. And what that is, 
is a semiconductor. It's a, it's a chip. It's, it's a computer chip. And it's, this is where, like, when they talk about megapixels and all that, this is where your megapixels are in, in this little thing here. And there's millions of them, millions and millions of little pixels. How many megapixel is a rebel? This is a six megapixel? Okay, so there's six million little pixels on there. And there's marketing crap involved with that where some pixels aren't really pixels and you know, some guys will shift so that they can double them or triple them. But that is the actual film in a digital camera. It's that little thing hidden all the way down in the middle there. So that's, that's the expensive bit. And I'm gonna put that face down. Now, right in front of that, we see this, which as I, as I bend it, you can see they're, they're very bendy. Here, I'll get you a better shot. Get some light in there. There, you can see these are very bendy. And these are the leaves of the shutter. So we'll dig down to that next. And you'll notice over here, there's this can right there. Can you, where is it? Tucked in here, I can see it now. Um, it is a 330 volt electrolytic capacitor. And you gotta be careful of those because it will bite you. People don't think, oh, it's just battery powered. It's, it can't have that much power in it. Well, this one will bite you. It won't kill you. I mean, you'd have to like be hooked up just right to really hurt yourself with it. But it'll sting really bad and it'll scare you and it'll hurt. And it's not dangerous like a USB cord. Did you see that article? They had a... Uh, there's an article online, I think it was in Denver, where some little girl got severely burned in the mouth by putting a USB cord in her mouth. No. <laughs> USB, anybody who knows anything about serious computer mojo will tell you that USB is only like five or 12 volts. I think it's only five volts, it might be 12, but it's really low voltage. And it's limited to a very tiny current, and you just can't hurt yourself in that way with USB. And I would be very happy to debunk that and put a USB cable in my mouth and plug it into a computer it's turned on. There's no way. The number of, I'm not saying a little girl wasn't hurt, don't get me wrong. I'm saying, okay, cool, a little girl was hurt, but I, I'm saying there's more to the story than just the USB cord, and it isn't the USB cord that was the hazard here. Um, if she was touching something else, like, I don't know, anything metal. Let's say she's touching an old electric screwdriver, okay, like, or a, a, an old electric drill would be a really good example. Um, my grandfather had an old craftsman electric drill from like 300 years before God and it only had a two-prong plug on it. And if you plugged it in backwards, instead of grounding the case, it would make the case, of, and it was a, a metal case drill, it would make the case hot. And this got particularly exciting for the operator who wasn't expecting it. And it, it wasn't a polarized plug, it wasn't a, a three-prong plug or anything, it was really weird. And that thing bit me, thought I was gonna die. I was just a kid when I did that. I don't know if he still has that. Builds character. But if you were touching something like that, that had a faulty electrical bit in it, or if you had a really grossly miswired outlet, I found what's messing me up. There's a hidden screw under that, I'll bet. But if you did something like that and the neutral wire of the, US, and, you, and you had a USB cable in your mouth, well, most of the connections on a USB cable are ground, like by surface area. And it's very likely that you could electrocute yourself in that manner. And I can see that happening. But with just a USB cable and not touching anything else, there's no way you're gonna get hurt. Not unless you've got the world's most impressively poorly designed and fails every manner of electrical inspection there is power supply. Okay, there isn't a screw under there. I am frightfully confused. I can see the screw, it's right here. And it's, it, it's part of that socket. It's like molded in, I think is what it is. 
Come off of there. Urgh. The camera does not want to die. Camera. Camera does not get a vote in this. Got that screw up. All kinds of extra bits falling out here. See, we didn't need that anyway. When parts fly out the top, you know you're doing it right. I have no screws here that I can take out. I have, oh, oh, hang on, that moved. That moved, did you see that? There's a little rubber plug down here. I, that got past me, I didn't see that all this time. There's a hidden little rubber plug, and you know what's hidden behind it? Not a damn thing! Doesn't do squat, all right. This is making me crazy. It's causing me duress. Okay, that obviously comes off the front. There are no screws that I can see. And that's not the part that bothers me. It's where are the screws that I can't see? What am I missing? Ah! It's down there somewhere. Ah! Get that over there. Well, that did it. Okay, so we've got a switch here, some various stuff, battery compartment, nothing really interesting though. Okay. And we've got, okay, now we're, we're into cool stuff here. You'll see there's some black tape here and there along the sides of the lens housing. That's usually to fix light leaks because you don't want light coming in from the side. It'll, call, it'll cause uh, ghosting and stuff. Here's a neat one. I don't know if I can get it to where you can see it. Let me, let me do a little digging here. See if I can work that out. There is, oh wow, there's lots of neat little stuff on here. It's so tiny, I don't know how well it's gonna come out on camera, but I'll do my best. Lots of little screws. Okay, we got the base plate off. I want that awesome prism. It's annoying to see things and know that there's a connection through there that you're not seeing. Can't figure out how that little Japanese dude got it in there, but he did it. I hate him for it. Little Japanese dude, you suck. I'm seeing rust on certain parts in here. 
you, you can definitely see the water damage. Total left on B. Got it! Ha! Okay. God, that was hard. That's just circuit cards. I am so close to the prism. Here we go! Here we go! It's not even a real prism. I feel so cheated. They didn't even use a real... I did all that work, and it's so cheap. They couldn't get a real prism. It's actually made, look at this, I'll, I'll take it apart because, okay, see, see that? This little doghouse thing, okay. This is hollow. It's not, this should be a piece of glass or a piece of glass in a nifty little housing, but it's not. It's some gummed together, like it's held together with chewing gum. If you break it open, there's a little mirror there and there's a little piece of plastic inside that is, um, it's mirrored. It isn't even a real mirror. It's a piece of plastic with a mirror, and it's right there. That's it. See? There's no real prism inside of Canon Rebel. That sucks. I am unhappy. There's the optics for the viewfinder, and like here's. That's a little lens thing. I don't know what that is, but it might be a light. And there's some diffusers. And there is some real glass in here, but not, not enough to be cool. I'm really, really disappointed to have worked that hard. And there's, there is more glass in the viewfinder, like in, in the back of the viewfinder. There's, there's two real lenses. And these are neat lenses. Look, we've got a Plano concave lens there. And we've got a convex convex lens there. So we've got a couple lenses there. We've got real glass in here for that mirror. And I'll save this for, for a separate video because this is going to take a lot of work to get into. You might be able to do it real quick here. Let's see. Yeah, I'm not going to get into this in enough time for what we've got left today because we're running out of film in our cameras. But there's the shutter right there, and you can see its leaves. I've popped them out. So there's like five leaves in this shutter, and they slide up and down, and here's the leaves, and you can see them. That's kind of cool. It's like a scissor action that makes them move. That's really neat. So, yeah. That's the basics inside a DSLR camera. This was a Canon Rebel, and here is the dangerous piece right here, this big power supply. And now you know. So you guys have fun. Thanks for hanging out with me and taking this apart. I'm Chris Bowden with The Geek Group. If you're into science and technology and want to learn more about stuff like this and have fun taking stuff apart, go to thegeekgroup.org and get in our forums. Get involved, donate, hang out, meet other weirdo geeks like you and me. I'm Chris Bowden. I'll see you guys next time. Till then, keep having fun with science. See ya.